On this Brad's Big Adventures, I'm checking out the Phoenix Comic Fest and seeing what cosplay is all about. Zaya. Okay, from which game? Uh, League of Legends. Got it, and? and? I'm Ari from League of Legends. And the whole object is to look like your part, even down to the feet. Did you did you guys make all this yourself? Uh, I did. You did? Yeah. So, and, and what is the object of cosplay? Help me out a little bit. It's getting to experience being somebody that you don't get to normally be for a day. Oh, like, like I do each day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is Jason with Fezzarama. These are making the huge comeback. This is like, this is classic right here. Yeah, this is more of that kind of like posh, smoking jacket kind of style. I've always been kind of fascinated with the Fez because it was a different thing, like it was a different style. I loved the culture around it. I wanted to make my friends Christmas presents, so I made them Fezzes. I started, like we started an instant cult. My passion is, is kind of diverse, so I like horror, I like mythology, I like science. It's just a palette for my artwork. There are different type of fezzes, right? It's not just yeah. the one that I know from my dad as a Shriner. Going back you know, to the Phoenicians where it started the style of hat, there have been many different heights in, in styles of them. So I started with this. This is one of our tall styles. This is our Death Eater. And it, it's that kind of traditional like Shriner's height of fez. And then we also have our, our what we call a chapeau, which is inspired by a Scottish Glengarry. So it's more of a military style. So if the tall ones kind of throw you off, yeah. um, I, I like the, the chapeau style. So it's gonna give you more of a military kind of vibe and you can kind of put it on a tilt. So you can see in our mirror there. We're, ooh, wow, that looks sexy. So I look good. What is cosplay? So cosplay is when you try and become a character, not just by putting on the costume, but you also try and act like that character. This is what you wear right here, huh? Yeah, this is a set of, uh, these are Blue Jay wings. Wow. And so I have like a little fantasy creature. And do you make this all yourself? Yeah, well, I started making them all myself, but now I have too many people ordering them and I can't keep up, so I uh, have- Oh, you sell these? I sell these, yes. And so now I have four people that I hired to help me. I'm thinking about getting into cosplay. Yeah. Uh, who do you think I would be? You said I'd probably be who? Uh, Green Lantern. All right, I like that, That's I like that. One. All right, what's some tips you can give me just getting into this? Uh, well, if you want to make it yourself, uh, I would suggest starting with the pattern and assuming you're going to have to make it at least twice because nothing you make the first time turns out the way you want it. Um, but don't give up because everything you make, the next one's always going to be better. Okay, I think I found my uh, cosplay character and it's the uh, mustache pretzel guy. So that's what I'm talking about. And then when I'm done, Mm. All right, I'm about to become a little kid. All right, so this is so awesome. Sam Jones is right here. And I got to tell you, I watch Flash Gordon 200 times. How does it feel that you still are in people's lives? It's like amazing. you, 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 people have grown up with yeah. you. I always talk about the blessings uh, in the movie business. I mean, number one, uh, Flash Gordon has, has become a triple blessing because number one, when you're hired for a project, that's the first blessing because it's predictable that Hollywood will be inconsistent always. So number one blessing, you're hired. Number two, it does well. Number three, longevity. And here we are. So Brad, I could tell you next year when we talk, I could say to you, 40 years ago, yeah. we made the movie Flash Gordon. I know. We made it in, se is, in 79. I know. I was, crazy. Ten, I was yeah. 10 years old. I'm, I'm like, yeah. I was, it was so incredible. And that is so amazing. And you out here, this is awesome. People come meet you and no, talk to you. It. Phoenix you, has always been good to me. What I love is you spend this time is, with fans. It's not no, just, you're just not writing. You're yeah. like spending time we with them. We filmed a series called The Highwayman here in Phoenix in 1988. Wow. 
and this was one of my favorite projects so. of all time. Yeah. And you're still going. We see you on TED. We see you on doing yeah. different things. Like well, I said, TED was the cool because it opened up that younger age demographic for me. It was it was always uh, me and, and my dad, and now it's grandpa, son, and grandson or granddaughter, yeah. who now I have all three of those age demographics now. With Flash Gordon, for instance, I've only seen it one time. However, the past two years, I've been doing a lot of Comic Cons and they're doing the uh, screening yeah. where they invite me in to do a Q&A. So I've seen it now because I've done nine or 10 screenings with the fans. Yeah. So I've seen it 10, 11 times in my life. Oh, I love it. I've introduced my yeah. son to it and everything. So how many times do people come up to you and go, hey, we throw me a football? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. And of course, with the uh, Star Wars movie coming out uh, solo, you got to stop off at the Star Wars bar, uh, and it's called the uh, the Cantina, or actually in the movie it's called the Cantina. Are you a Star Wars fan? I take it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, since '77, I saw it originally. I was 11 when it came out. Yeah. So. These kids have no idea, do they? No idea. No idea. I they get it like a new Star Wars movie every year. I mean, even, or six months. They just had one in December. Yeah. So, like when we grew up, we didn't. We had like years between movies. Star Wars, one of the biggest things out here, and you can go home with your own lightsaber that you can actually fight with. These things are that tough, and you don't have to make the sound yourself. It makes it makes it for you. So no more wong wong wong. Who are you? I'm Little Bill. Right, and little Bill from The Bill Cosby Show. I am Sonic, but I'm also a magical girl, so I'm like Maho Sonic. You guys get pictures taken with you and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, a lot of yeah, people come up to us and stuff like that. So sure. do people know that you're Little Bill? Yeah, no, I, I didn't think any surprise. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Little Bill. All right, my other question is, uh, I don't see much of us people dressing up like <laughs> this, I'm saying. You know, what, what's the, you know, this is all, I mean, do we? I'm saying I know what people do, but yeah, I'm saying yeah, like yeah. we our, our people's we you know, but this mm -hmm. is cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Daniel here with make sure I say it, Steam Crow. Yep. And then you have the Monster Rangers, which is like yeah. your family and stuff. How did this all come about? I grew up watching Harryhausen films and, and you know all those old rubber monster movies. And as a kid, I just wanted to draw monsters more than anything else in my life. We started making Steam Crow and making art and everything. And then we made some patches. And our fans decided to be rangers. They made uniforms to go with the patches. And then they wanted to do camp outs. And suddenly it's like this whole community of nerd camping, monster loving folks. So our theme is Swampy, who's this this, uh, this fella up there, if you can get up there, so he's a creature from the Black Lagoon sort of guy. So he lives in swamps, he likes eating fish. I wanted to make my dream job. My dream job was drawing the things I love for people I really like. And the things I love are monsters, and the people I like are monster rangers. Gotta check out him online, again, at steamcrow.com, and there's the monster uh, scouts, uh, and you gotta become a monster scout. Missy here with uh, Missy Monkeys. You make all these monkeys yourself. I do. This yep, they're all genuine handmade sock monkeys. I'm the largest manufacturer of them in the United States. What made you want to do sock monkeys? Um, you know what, I just like making things and it ended up being a niche that everybody wanted to be part of and so I just kept creating different ones and I've got over 300 different kinds and, and growing. And, I love, and people actually come get these and they travel with them. Yes, I do have traveling sock monkeys. There's one that's out in London right now traveling around with uh, the boyfriend sock monkey. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, named it Lucy. <laughs> what's been the favorite one today like out here out for the event? Favorite one is anything Harry Potter. Ooh. Yeah, Harry Potter has been the theme, you know, surprising. So. Um, the, genuine, the genuine favorite one is Wonder Woman, but she's always sold out. There you go. Got to get a sock monkey. And then right here is 
Amber Bright. And so look at this. And, and you said how many characters do you have? Uh, probably about 60 different characters. Cra rawr, yeah, rawr. It's like, I'm getting scared. Some of these costumes are crazy. So I am Melina from Mortal Kombat. Woo! Dang it! Wow. Oh, no. People come and find you, like they and they love you. Huh? Oh yeah, and I, I and it's funny because I had one guy come up and he's like, "Great retro cosplay." I'm like, "Don't call it retro cosplay. It's not that old of a character." <laughs> Uh, the Blonde Swan Hat Boutique has helped me pick out the right hat, right? And it comes down to the hat. It does come down to the hat. That's where it starts. You want it to, you know, focus on the face. You got to give it a little attitude off to the side. Bam! There, there it is. Is this, is this steampunk? What is? What am I wearing type? Well, you're wearing just a short, one of our Victorian style short top hats. Got it. And it's obviously inspired by Doctor Who. <laughs> I've been doing this over 15 years. and. We've been doing lots of conventions. This is, I think, our fifth or fourth year here at the Phoenix Comic Con. So. Is this the hat for me? I'm very happy because I found people I know. <laughs> I don't know who they are, but I know the characters. That's what I know. You're Mario, you're Luigi, you are? Waluigi. <laughs> and back here? Wario. Okay, and? Toad. You understand I've been walking this floor. I've been seeing characters I have no idea. Yeah. I thought it was me, <laughs> and then someone's like, it's not me, right? No, you're good. So I'm good, right? There's yeah. some people you didn't understand either. No. Now, let me ask you, do you guys have the problem that people come and go now, who are you guys? No. <laughs> no. 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 All right, you do have that. Yeah. So it's classic. Everyone, everyone's coming together. That's what I like, and that's what I'm talking about. Well, I'll tell you, uh, that I think that's a great way to end my big adventure at the Phoenix Comic Fest, is meeting characters that I do know. <laughs> it's all True. about what's going on on up here with the hats. That's it right there. So that's another adventure in a hat. That was so cheesy. <laughs>